Distressing news, though, to be serious here for Ravens fan this morning. Man, NFL Network's Ian Rappaport and Garofolo are reporting that Lamar Jackson faces an uphill battle to play this weekend against the Bengals. This sucks. This totally sucks. Garofolo, he adds that Lamar has tried to do some work on his injured knee but hasn't felt right to this point. He's yet to practice at all, getting uh, at all since getting hurt as the Ravens begin practice work for the Bengals today. I'm shocked by this. We thought he'd be back, and it, it really is surprising, and I hate this for him. He's missed the final five games of the regular season. It would be awful, like a nightmare scenario, if he misses what could be his last chance to get out there and make a statement on the field before dealing with looming and potentially dooming contract negotiations. And it would also be clearly a downgrade and a shot to the Ravens' chances this weekend uh, in their third matchup against this Bengals squad. Backup Tyler Huntley missed last week, of course, with the shoulder. So if Lamar can't go, is it Anthony Brown again? This is tough news, and we'll, of course, be tracking it. Uh, but barring a perfect defensive performance from this Ravens squad, they need to put up, what, 25 points? And I'm not sure if that's Huntley or if that's Brown. So we're going to be following that story and getting you guys set with the playoff picture. Very curious about Gronk thoughts, very curious about about what Cam Jordan thinks, and we'll, of course, hit the Giants and the Vikings uh, battle as well. So we're going to turn our attention to Wild Card Weekend here on this Wednesday. Uh, and we're going to turn the page from the 2022 regular season and start looking ahead to the playoffs. And I always do underreactions on Wednesdays, so which should have been my first sign that that was the day of the week. But uh, I'm going to do it Wild Card style, and we're going to focus on the NFC today, AFC tomorrow. So lots of focus on Brock Purdy's incredible run, their number one defense. Lots is made of that. And I think it's made us collectively, you and me, underreact to how big of an impact Christian McCaffrey's actually had on the San Francisco 49ers. I think we take it a little for granted and we're not giving it its credit. So if you just look at what CMC has done since taking over the starting role for the Niners back in week eight, I mean, are you kidding me? The Niners have gone a perfect 10-0, and he's averaged over 100 total yards per game, scored 10 total touchdowns, which is tied with Jamal Williams for the league lead, by the way, over that span, who got plenty of love for it against the Lions as they bounced the Packers on Sunday night. And he's caught 50 balls. This is the ultimate security blanket for Brock Purdy. So we gave George Kittle his love, we've given Brock his love, we've given Shanahan his love, we've given Bosa his love, we've given the number one defense his love. But, you know, don't forget, the Niners were three and four before integrating him fully into this offense that they have up there. I mean, this is probably the most impactful midseason addition that we've seen in the history of the league. Challenge me on that. Most impactful midseason addition in the history of the league. Who am I missing? Bueller? Bueller, let me know, at Up and Adam Show. And I'm excited to see this first playoff appearance. Uh, he, of course, had one. I could hardly remember it. It was his rookie year back with the Panthers. This is five years in the making, and he's healthy, and he's going to be the key in this game against the Seahawks. The Niners, of course, beat the Seahawks. When they did it a couple weeks ago, he racked up 32 touches. He looks so healthy. He looks so good. 138 yards and a touchdown. You know this offense is going to run through him against the Seahawks. They have the 30th ranked run defense. And I'd have to imagine that um, he's going to keep that success rolling this week. Uh, another thing we're underreacting to, let's move on here to the Giants. Kenny Galladay, why is this not getting enough love? I saw this and I was like, Am I, the gas leak happened? Am I, are there fumes in my head? Is this really happening here? Colliday scored a touchdown Sunday against the Eagles on Darius Slay. What? And I think we're underreacting not only to that, but to also the Giants receivers and how they're playing of late. Oh, what? This acrobatic grab in the fourth quarter marks his first touchdown in almost three years. I saw that and was like, okay, what are we what are we working with here going into the playoffs? And maybe this gets him going just in time. A little spark, a little momentum, a little something. Either way, so much was made about how terrible this Giants receiving core is. Like, do they even have a receiving core? We need Odell Beckham Jr. Get Brandon Marshall's coming on saying, get him to the Giants. They need him. Daniel Jones needs him. But these guys have been making plays lately. And there's going to be room for them to make a big impact against the Vikings. Want to know why? Because as good as you think the Vikings are, and I know they got magic in these one possession situations, you know, they're a roller coaster and it always goes their way and they land safely and everybody's okay. They have the 31st ranked pass defense in the playoff. Isn't that insane? 31st. 
uh, and just as they did in week 16, okay? Former Niner seventh rounder Richie James had eight catches for 90 yards in that first matchup. Hodgins, hello, Isaiah Hodgins. Welcome to the conversation here. He's the Giants guy that they signed midseason. He was cut, of course, by the Buffalo Bills. He had eight grabs for 89 yards and a touchdown. Darian Slayton chipped in. He had 79 yards of his own. It took two turnovers. It took took a blocked punt. It took a 61-yard field goal for the Vikings to overcome that effort and get the win in that one. So I think underreacted to is that this group of playmakers sort of misfits. What are we making of them? They're going to have a big say in this rematch unless the Vikings magically change something with their pasty overnight. And they're peaking at the right time. So that's definitely something I'm looking at. Um, okay, let's move on to NFC. What's the last one? Oh, Bucks cowboys uh, I know the Buccaneers' offense has been struggle city, okay? Uh, sure. And I know that their run game ranks dead last in the NFL, and those are things that we know. I think we're underreacting to the fact that Playoff Lenny, remember that nickname? Playoff Lenny, are you here? Are you with us? Do you exist in eight career playoff games? Let's, let's remember here. This is, isn't just with the Bucks and Tom Brady. With the Jags, too. Fournette's gone six and two. He's averaged 105.1 total yards a game, and he scored 10 touchdowns. So he's one of the truly great postseason performers this league has ever seen. Think about that. Until McCaffrey comes and, you know, crushes it and wins the Super Bowl. But that's neither here nor there. Leonard Fournette was the driving force on this Bucks offense. This is what brought Brady that seventh ring. If you really think about it, when they started clicking, what started clicking, why he got a nickname. You don't get a playoff nickname for nothing. And while I know Tampa's offensive line is mm, not the same as it was, especially not back then in these numbers that I'm talking about, at least with his time with the Buccaneers, we can't underestimate what Lenny could do, especially in this matchup. This defense with the Cowboys, they got some playmakers. They can do some things, but they are bottom 10 against the run. He went off for 137 yards in Tampa's week one win over Dallas. I know it's been a long time, but what if he can have another big day? And what if he's the reason that they don't and they get bounced? So Lenny's going to play huge in this matchup on wild card weekend. Okay, I want you to send me, guys, if there's a midseason addition on any team that made a huge impact a la a McCaffrey that I'm missing. I also want you to send me and tweet me um, the roller coaster that you hated the most as a child. Like anything I did at Six Flags Green America, the demon, Batman, no, not interested at all. Viper was one when I was there. If the American Eagle is still in service at Six Flags Great America, we have failed as a society, in my opinion. Tweet me, let me know, and I appreciate it so much, everybody uh, sending me the venture. Uh, the venture the ideas and so it was the OG target and I really that I really felt seen in that moment so love you guys we got Gronk we got Cam Jordan on the show Paul Verzi super hilarious comedian comedian do not go anywhere <laughs>